From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show, including Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, they are free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault, grab a great book from We Read the night join the space travelers for five bucks a month and of course captain shirk has you all up to date on the sor news wire tonight's show is brought to you by chive charities help make the world 10 percent happier by donating to chive charities today you can find them on our website get ready to board the woo train as it's the first friday of the month and i don't know about you it always puts a smile on my face when it's time for our keith andrews and the et connection Keith is a lifelong ET contactee who ha- now helps counsel people who have had their own contact and really don't know, understand, or quite understand why it's actually happening. Keith is an author, as well as a psychic intuitive, which helps his personal connections with aliens from another world. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire, brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Mr. R. Keith Andrews, how you doing, my friend? How's your February starting out for you? With a bit of a crash, but doing not bad now. Well, very but, nice. Yeah, you know, we've been adding to to the work that we've been working on in the first place. So, of course, with the with the uh, with the races of the worlds, we've got. I think I've got six more races to add to it. Oh yeah, what's already in. It. That's what we want to hear. That's exactly what we want to hear is that is that you've been able to come through with more races uh, for your book and and I'm very excited. I'm very excited for you for that, man, because I know how hard you have worked on that book and and it's you know what in me writing my own book right now, man, I I can tell you right now for people who have never written a book before, it is tough. I don't know how these people like Grant Cameron or or Nick Redfern or or people like that can pump out like a book like every six weeks to two months. I have no idea because literally my hands kill me from typing so much, man. How about yours? Oh, I agree. I have no idea how they pump it out that fast. I don't get any sleep as it is. You know, and I'm, I mean, the last one came out in... Well, Race of the Worlds came out in June. I think it came out in June. And we're now trying to get get moved around it. We've got, of course, second of the novels is coming out. But that's coming out in the fall. And the important factor here from my standpoint is you'll, you'll love the one, the one race that we've got that I am adding that should have been in the first one. But... We are bringing the Sasquatch into into the new one, you know, into, okay. the, into the second print. It should have been in the first. I just ran out of time before the conference. Yes, yes, I understand that. So you think Sasquatch is alien? No, Sasquatch is an is a ancient race. It evolved here. You and I have had that discussion a number of times. Oh, I know, and I'm I'm willing to get into that again. I am totally willing to get into that again. We we could drop the gloves and go on that one. But yeah, no, no man, no man. I, I'm I'm very proud. So outside of Sask, why would you put Sasquatch in an alien race? Then actually, that's why I didn't, I didn't call it alien races. I called it races of the worlds. That in in this book, I've got them literally listed as either off worlders or ancient races. Right. Be- because there's a number of, of sentient races on this planet that people don't know about. Many of them fall into what you have, into what you have referred to as cryptids, either cryptids or myths. Right. Okay. It's just like because of the number of different races I was dealing with, and I know they didn't all come from off world. I couldn't list them as alien. They were native. Right. They're no more alien than you are. Mind you, in your case, that might be a debatable point. Oh, for sure. For for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
So who else have you got in the new book? Give us these new races that uh, that you're looking for here or that you've been able to recall from from uh, your own investigations. Well, I came across reference to one, and i got to go back and find out what the heck it was called, but I do remember the, the star system it came from. People have, can, keep asking me about the tall blues, you know, the tall right. blue rings. Well, I, right. I did find a reference to them. They come from Aldebaran, and they are around the 12-foot mark. The tall blues. Yeah. They're okay. they're blue rays similar in, in appearance, similar to the Pleiadians. But their skin is not translucent. They literally have blue skin. Primarily because they're cobalt based. And then of course I did find the reference to three other reptilian races that all evolved here. One evolved from the one called the the uh, Raka, which is the um, they evolved from the T Rex. And yeah, I know the idea that chickens evolved from T Rexes. Okay, thing is, the theory is that apes evolved from, or that man evolved from apes, but there's still apes here too, right? And so you've got them. You've got another race that evolved from the from the Pachycephalosaurus and one from the Spinacosaurus. Now, we've already discussed the Chituari, which are a reptilian race based out of Africa. So at this point, we're now up to, we've got an extra, an extra three reptilian races. And in all fairness, I call them reptilian simply because that's what they look like, not necessarily because of what they are. So, you How know, did you, so okay, so that's that's three plus Sasquatch. Who's the 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 fifth one now? Um, I'm trying to remember exactly. I've got to go back through notes. These are things I've been going back through old notes. Well, the fifth one, of course, was the ones out of Aldebaran. Right, that's the tall blues. You've got your your Sasquatch, the the Aldebarans. The three reptilians. Chevron, Chevron, as in the gas station. No, no, Aldebaran. A L D E B R A N. It's a star. Okay. All right. Now I'm saying. Go ahead. Well, no, I'm I'm just kind of curious yeah. in regards to to the species. Like, what do they, what do they look like? Well, the when we start looking at the um, at the ones out of Aldebaran, and you'll have to forgive me, I forget what the name is. I've got it written down somewhere. Um, that that's why I make notes. Um, but they look relatively human. Okay, as far as bipedal, you know, two arms, two legs, that sort of thing. Right, but they are anywhere from twelve to fourteen feet tall. Aside from being blue, from being blue, they would absolutely look like giants. Okay, now when you take a look at the at the at the um, at the Raka, right? They are about they, they are around the five and a half to six foot mark, right? Five to six feet. Their heads are rather oversized. Their arms are definitively short. Which is always fun watching them try and do much. They really don't, they really didn't evolve much in the way of technology. Okay, they are much more clan oriented, much more um, barbaric in nature in a lot of ways. Right. right, and yes, they do have the tails. Now, of course, you know, so. And I was just trying to just have a just a little while before this call and all pieces together. But um, the when you take a look at the ones that ev- that evolved from the from the Pachycephalosaurus, they are yes. as if if you know anything at all about dinosaurs, they have a skull cap on them that makes a, it makes a dwarven skull cap look like a like cray paper. Right. 
All right, the questions are starting to come in. I just want to remind everybody, if you're in one of our chat rooms or on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio, put your questions in capital letters, and I will get them to Keith. Let's start off with Joe here in the chat room, and he is asking because, you know, he's an alien abductee too, and Joe is wondering, which are the most physically attractive aliens? Well, that really is in the eye of the beholder, which sounds like a cop-out. In my opinion, Venusians definitely rank up there. Venusians do, or the Orions are also quite, quite, a com- uh, quite appealing. But it really does depend on the individual. I will guarantee that you take a, you know, if you take one of the, one of the reptilian races, they will not find a simian very, you know, simian-based very attractive at all. Okay. Simian based for those that don't know, is ape. They appear like apes, very much like the Wara. Okay, all right. Let's continue on here. We got a question from the SOR Space Travelers Club from Joey, who is asking: Does the race from Aldebaran reveal if they ever helped the Nazis during World War II? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, quite frankly, no. They just stood out like a sore thumb. However, were the, were the Nazis involved with off-worlders? The answer is absolutely, yeah, there's no doubt there. What most people don't realize is so were most of the other major, major countries at the time. As in the United States, Canada, you know, China had the, was dealing with them. Even down, even though they weren't a major player, even Mexico was dealing with them at the time. You know, really? and they're all over England. So, yeah, there's no question the Nazis were involved, were, were connected. But the, the question that goes with that is, were the Nazis, in, were the off-worlders involved in, in weaponry? No. Had the off-worlders let their weaponry loose on this planet, the war wouldn't have lasted six years. Heck, it wouldn't have lasted six days, never mind years. Awesome. Awesome. All right, let's get to another question here. Uh, This one, uh, let me find it here. This one coming from Space Travelers Club on Facebook from Sparkles, who is asking... How about the people that have followed Bigfoot prints to have them suddenly stop? Seemingly, the Bigfoot just disappeared. And that's not entirely a surprise. Number one, the 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 um, Bigfoot does know how to vanish right in front of you. Okay, they are they are more than capable. Of disappearing, of hiding their tracks, they just don't usually bother. It's just once they know they're being tracked, they get a little, shall we say, skittish. Something about humans keep saying they're going out hunting them. But okay, it's so- not you know, it's not a question of just disappearing as far as that goes. Well, I mean, there have been, there's been tracks in the snow, Keith, that have been followed, oh. and they just stop. Oh, I'm not. I'm not saying that the, 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 the tracks don't bad, don't stop. Okay, what I'm saying is they're not teleported off the planet. See, there are things on this planet that people really don't understand yet. Not the least of which. Keith, give me a second here, because I think uh, I think we froze on our. Oh, I think we're back now. I think we're back now. We had a little bit of a freezing there on our on our Spreaker platform, so I do apologize. Uh, but okay, go ahead, Keith. You were you were saying? Yeah, I was saying. Footprints. It's it's not a question of do the footprints all of a sudden stop. It's a question of they're not. It's the. Bigfoot isn't just being transported off the planet. Okay, what people don't realize is there are riddles throughout the throughout, especially throughout the mountains. There are what are called what are literally 
their pocket wormholes. Okay, and we've we've run into these our, ourselves. When we were driving to um, between Kelowna and Vancouver, we had witnesses with us and an odometer that that repeatedly showed us showed our trip was taking a hundred kilometers less than what the trip should have been. Bigfoot simply knows where these are and knows how to access them. But they are a natural phenomenon. It's kind of like knowing how to how to ride the ride the wind currents if you're if you're into hang gliding or if you know how to fly. Very interesting, very interesting indeed. All right, I'm going to check the other uh, rooms here because so I know the uh, the questions are starting to build up for you here on. Spaced Out Radio. Our Keith Andrews is our guest. We got about six minutes here before uh, we got to go. Let's go back to Sparkles here. She is asking, Keith, are you familiar with the book of alien races that is supposed to be translated from the secret Russian KGB book? If so, do you feel that the information is correct? Well, number one, I've heard I've heard tale of it. I would not be surprised to find out that they've that they've got a lot of, of functional information. The odds are, from what I've seen from other from other documents, is I may simply know them by a different name. Like I was, I was looking at one from the states that was done, and the the races are very similar. The only problem is I don't necessarily know the names they use, so I look at the at the descriptions and documentation to find out which ones they fit to. But I've got no reason to say that they're not accurate, that's for certain. All right. Shar is asking, what do aliens do to make people stay asleep during abduction? Oh, that's the easy part. For the most part, sonic waves. Sonic a waves? Sonic, a sonic wave. Humans know how to use them. The right, the right um, decibel will knock a human out. And keep them out without causing damage. Right. Okay, and humans already know about this technology. Now, mind you, humans developed it independently. So usually that's the way they do it. Okay, um, optical fluctuations will also help. Mind you, that usually throws them into a trance instead of knocking them out. Hmm. Yeah, those are those are the two most common methods. What's the uh, all right? So, how does that affect the human body? It doesn't. Well, negligible. It has a bit of an impact on the on the uh, subquantum level, but humans wouldn't notice it. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I know that probably sounded like Swahili, but you know, oh no, every, it, 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 perfect English, perfect English. <laughs> you know, the reality is, anytime you force a state of aware of consciousness or unconsciousness onto somebody, you're going to have there is going to be an effect. Okay, but because of the way they do it, it's shall we say as minimal as you're likely to get away with. All right, let's go back to Sparky here, who is asking... Oh, no, I already read her question. I apologize. Let's go. Um, Joey is asking in the Space Travelers Club, did Dave get abducted because of his great hair? Thanks, Joey. Appreciate that. (laughs) And I'll leave that one for you to answer. All I'm going to say is, you want to see great hair, look at our Keith... And the pork chop sideburns that he is sporting right now, they are massively awesome. Massively awesome. You know I'm a fan of those, Keith. Yes, I realize that. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're a, shall we say, carryover from father. Well, I'll tell you. You look fantastic. The long, curly hair with the big mutton chops on the sides of your face. You're looking like a real dude, man. Real dude. All right, Lori's question 
She is asking, Keith, so who then helped the Nazis down in Antarctica? Do you know anything about that? Yeah, it just wasn't off worlders. That was ancient races. You see, the ancient races, everybody, there, there's this neat little rumor, and it's not so much a rumor, that Hitler was into dealing with such things as, you know, as the arcane magic. The reality is that does that work? The answer is yes. The ancient races actually know it quite well. Okay, so were they were they talking to him about it? Certainly. Of course, the funny thing was that the people that were talking to him were about as well liked down there as what as what Hitler at the time was liked up here by everybody but the Germans. Interesting. Interesting. All right. I think uh, as we wait for more questions from our lovely audience here, can't believe Joey made me ask that. Really, Joey? Well, think of the bright side. He didn't ask you to get you to ask some of the questions he could have. Oh, that that's very true. That is very true. I believe there's another one from another Joe here. Let me go take a look as we continue on with <coughs> the connection tonight. We've got about 90 seconds here before we have to go to break. Which aliens pretend to be deer? <laughs> what? The? What? Oh, yeah. Okay. So D- Joe lives in the wilderness, and he, he's had a bunch of deer in the yard lately, and he's wondering if, if they've changed from owls to deer. Uh, no, but that, in all fairness, the greys do use, depending on the person, the greys will use a deer, uh, deer overlay, right? Because of the fact that they do, because of the fact the eyes are easier to conceal that way, the thing you've got to realize is that there is another race out there that you do not get pictures of that will use the deer as watchers, if you will. As in, they deal with the deer, and the deer watch what's going on, and then, if you will, report back. Kind of, kind of, if you will, liaisons. Okay. You right, would be, I guess. people would Go know ahead. them as dryads. The the other Dry, race dryads. Of dealing, dryads. Okay. First, um, forest spirits, if you will. All right, Keith, I'm going to get you to hold on right there as we're going to go out at the bottom of the hour here for our first break of the night. Our Keith Andrews and the ET Connection happens the first Friday of every month. Get your questions in the chat room. Put them in capital letters, whether you're in Spreaker, Facebook, the SOR Space Travelers Club, LGAB, Revolution Radio, Twitter at hashtag Space Out Radio. We want your questions for next at Space Out Radio. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. 
You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is watching. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightline Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightline's report on the Spaced Out Radio website and let's figure out what's going on together. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get your Bumblefoot hot sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble. F- We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot hot sauce, available now at kajans.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, Space Travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. 
It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. want to remind all of you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you. You can check them on out while you're listening to the show. First Friday of the month means it's time to ride the Ruwu train as our Keith Andrews is back with the ET Connection. And Keith, we got a lot of questions from the audience here building on up. So we're going to check it on out right now. What do you think, man? Absolutely. All right. All right. Want to give a shout out to Jason in the Spreaker chat room. First time he's been in the chat room. Long time listener. Thank you, Jason, for joining us on this Friday night. Let's go to Shar. I like this question. Thanks, Shar. Have you, Keith, found that any of these creatures come from different dimensions? Nope. Oh, that's for subtle. I'll give you a little more than that, though. Um, anything existing on this planet, yes, there are ones that vibrate at a different rate, but they are all three-dimensional. The thing is, if you vibrate something fast enough, it will pass through something else of third-dimensional quality. Because the molecules in third-dimensional space are not actually solid. You know, you look at a, at a tabletop, and people will go, that's a solid wall, you know, a solid table. No, it's not. If you vibrate another chunk of matter fast, fast enough, it will slide between the molecules of the table, thereby vanishing from sight. Easy way to test that. Put your hand in front of your, in front of your face... And just wave it back and forth really fast, and you'll say, or look at a look at a uh, turbine. You cannot see the blades on a turbine once they get moving. Right. What happens though is they're still three dimensional. They just vibrate faster, so you can't see them. It also makes getting places a little easier. For the Which first you know, time in, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish up. Which, in all likelihood, is one of the reasons why races like, and I, I'm, it's only a, a suspicion at this point, but I suspect very strongly that's one of the things that the, that the Sasquatch do to vanish out of sight while you're looking at them. All right, for the first time in months, Claudia in our Space Travelers Club on Facebook is here. Hi, Claudia. We have missed you. She is asking, are spaceships a manifestation of thought made by the aliens so they can use it to travel? Uh, 99% of them, I would have to say no. Most of them are literally a physical construct, just much higher technology than mankind has. You know, is it, are some of them created as in, if you will, a holographic display? Certainly. Also known as a decoy. But the aliens are traveling from planet to planet, either don't require the starships or have physical ones. Hmm. All right. Let's get to Sparkles, who is asking, Keith, are there any ancient races still living in... In Antarctica? Uh, in Antarctica, not exactly. In, in But there is an access point to the to the what people call hollow earth or inner earth, depending, that is in the depths of Antarctica. And there is, and I'll find this one eventually, there is an old city that is buried underneath the ice flows that they will eventually uncover. Don't ask me when they're going to uncover it. Is that with a polar shift or something? Yeah, it's because of the, of the shift in the... It, it's because of the temperature shifting. You know, because this... What people are saying 
Yeah, you know, when they say that um, global warming doesn't happen, yeah, guess what? They're in for a bit of a shock. Um, but yeah, as the as the temperature changes and what have you, and the ice changes locations, they will uncover. All right, let's head over to Twitter. Greco is asking. What alien race have you had a craving for since you last dined on McAlien? Hmm. Craving just between, never. J- just between us. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's the easy part. I was going to call it cow. Of course, they're not technically alien, but they're not human. Come on. A little side of gray on the side? Just a dash of a dash of Venusian? Yeah, that's one of those wonderful little t- topics that we don't bother with because it opens way too many craters. Oh, Keith, after you opened that up a few months ago, we, we can't go back, man. As, as, go back. as you recall, I was not the one that opened that. Well, I, I mean, the, but the fa- your fans want to know. Well, here's the problem. See, I don't crave food on the whole. I mean, I require oh. it, but that's as far as that goes. Hmm. How do the aliens feed, man? That depends on the alien. Some of them have table manners that are just absolutely appalling. At least from from Terran standards. Okay, there are many that, like with the wild animals of Earth, will they feed live. Okay, then you get something like the, you know, there, there are some races, right, that will dissolve their food before eating it. Simply because they, quite frankly, they have to. Like the Korlok, for instance, they literally will envelop their food and, and literally dissolve it. Now, fortunately, you don't actually get to see that. Okay, you take a look at the at the mantis, right? They're no fun to watch eat. This is why when you when you're eating at a at a uh, consortium, you know, in a consortium um, cafeteria, if you will, always be careful who you choose for a dinner partner. You know, much more preferable to have ones that actually have the same kind of eating habits you do. And no, before anybody gets any brilliant ideas, it is not actually called a free for all. At least so not a So they don't have, like, a buffet sitting up on Mars right now? Oh, I have no doubt they have a buffet on Mars. Okay, but then Martians, you know, the Martokians, in all fairness, eat food very very similar in in pattern to the way humans do. The one thing I found fascinating with the Martokian I ended up dealing with is it turns out they have a definite craving for ice cream. How can you blame them? Oh, I How don't. Can... Exactly. You cannot blame them. It's ice cream, man. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. It's a little hard to get that on Mars. Exactly. Exactly. They just haven't brought Ben and Jerry's up there yet, eh? Didn't bring Dairy Queen up there either. <sighs> Terrible. Terrible. What are those Martians up to? How do you uh, not on do average, it? about do, six feet is an adult. How, how do you not do it? How do you not do it? All right, let's move on here. April is asking, are the greys any new phenomenon for Earth? Um, well, considering they've been here for quite literally millions of years, I'd be inclined to say no. You know, it depends on your definition of new, I suspect. But they have literally been here for millions of years. For, you know, they weren't actually the first race here. Right. But they were, but they have been here for quite a while. It's just they managed to keep quiet, keep things hidden for the most part, until mankind's technology started making it more complicated. Damn mankind. Well, I mean, humans have come up with some rather remarkable things all on their own. 
You know, I, I find it kind of fascinating the number of people that think that just about all of the technological advances are attributed to people that didn't kind of start here. Like? Well, the, for instance, the computer was built by man. It was designed by man. Okay, the, um, what is it, the harp was designed by man. Okay, and most of the aircraft that are, are they may, many things are inspired by what mankind sees. Yeah. I mean, heck, even skyscrapers were inspired by what mankind saw. Right. All right. Yes. But the, these are all things that, like, electricity was harnessed because mankind went out of his way to figure out how to do it. All right, let's get to Jason's question here in the speaker chat. He is asking, it's a two-parter, is the Earth, Keith, unique to the non-Terrans, or are there other planets with a civilization similar of Earth who are not fully conscious to the alien reality yet, and do they interact with them similarly? Okay, the first, and the first question is, is Earth unique to the, to the non-Terrans? The answer is, yeah. It has it has an incredible setup on it, as far as the database goes. Basically, it's a huge living library. Now, are there other planets that have similar evolutionary patterns that aren't entirely aware of of the offworlders simply because the offworlders are staying hidden? The answer is also yes. Can I tell you where they are? No. Okay, I can tell you there is another planet in exactly the same orbit as Earth that has a very similar configuration. But, my, aside from the fact they have no war over there or anything else, they are fully cognizant of the, of the aliens. And quite frankly, in full, in full um, communication with them. But then they don't have the fear base. You know, so are there other 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 civilizations that are as evolved as Earth, if not less so? The answer is absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's Excellent. just this one happens to be in the right place. All right, let's get to Kevin's question. Kevin is asking, Keith, do you know of a land that Admiral Byrd claimed to be beyond the ice wall in Antarctica that was supposed to be very large and of a mild climate? Uh, well, mild climate, technically the answer is yes. It's under, because it's under a, it's literally under a protective dome. Uh, do understand when I talk about dome in this case, I am not referring to something physical. Okay, the the reality is there are technologies, or a, there are we'll call them technologies for lack of a, better, of a better way of putting it, that can modify weather and control the climate in an area, in a limited area. But they're very careful with it because if they're not, it can offset everything else. As mankind is finding, playing with weather patterns is an absolute disaster. They, they find that with heart periodically. Right? You just don't play with certain patterns. But ultimately, right. yeah, the answer is yes. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, let's go to, let me see if I got them all here on that chat room. Yeah, we're caught up there. All right, let's go to Lori's question. So if the Antarctic ancient race is gone, they left holograms to scare the military, so they are still there or dead, or are they hiding? Most of, most of depending on which section we're looking at, most of them took off. Okay, the few that were left behind, on the whole, have passed away. Okay, there are a few stragglers that ended up in 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 the inner earth. Okay, so you've sort of got a mixed bag, but the the reality is that for from a Terran standpoint, are they not there? Yeah, 
you're looking at a dead city. Although secret said city holds are incredible. All right, let's move on to Bart Bart Bowie here, who is asking, do women get probed like men do, like what we heard of the Whitley Strieber story? Um, I would I would venture to say yes, simply because of the fact that I don't, in all fairness, know the Whitley Strieber story. I'm one of the worst one of the worst researched individuals on the planet. I'm sure of it. But considering what I do know about the way that they that they do their examination, essentially yes. You know, taking female anatomy into consideration, obviously, there's modifications. What are you, are you mincing some meat in the background there on a chopping board or what? No. Oh, it sounds um, like it. Yeah, no, I know yeah. what that was. thought maybe you were making, uh, tenderizing some steaks or something. I, I don't know. Well, it's a thought, but no, I don't have any handy. They're frozen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's move on here. Uh, let's go to uh, April, who is asking in our Space Travelers Club on our website. Shadow people, why do they always look two-dimensional? Because it's easier to confuse you. Quite literally, that is a trick of, of the lighting according to what they know how to manipulate. See, you're dealing with people that know how to work with how to move through, literally how to move through shadow. Well, shadow, needless to say, for all intents and purposes, is two-dimensional. In all fairness, it's actually three. But it does to the human to the human eye, it does appear to. And since the shadow, the, the shadow people do know how to move through it, um, that is quite literally why they seem to be part of it almost. It's kind of like light-based people seem to seem to sparkle, if you will. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Let's move on to Greco here on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. He is asking, how can I suit up and go abducting all across the cosmos with my alien crew? Hopefully I would be the first alien intern. Uh, well, I'm going to pop that bubble. He's certainly not going to be the first one. But that being said, I chalk up the luck of the draw only I question whether it was luck. Um, do I know how to absolutely get a, you know, get a pass to do that? No. I leave that to them. However, we can safely say you won't be the first. There have been a staggering number of people that have, have wanted that, but you had been alive some 15 million years ago in order to be the first. All right. Chuck and his power stash are asking, in the background, is that you, instead of mincing steaks, tenderizing, are you making an alien milkshake? No. Number one, I don't like milkshakes. What? Oh, Keith, we've been doing this four and a half years, and, and now we find out you don't like milkshakes? And nobody ever asked. But that being said, no, and just to clarify that, I'm playing with a, with a uh, letter opener right now, and I happen to clip my eye to catch my, my boot with it. Oh, I see. I see. All right. Well, thanks for answering. I, I, milkshakes. I can't believe you don't like milkshakes. You like ice cream, but you don't like milkshakes. Yes, wow. but I don't. But I don't like mel um, melted ice cream. No, that drives me nuts. That drives me absolutely nuts. All right, let's get. To, we've got about three minutes here before we got to go to break. At the top of the hour, our Keith Andrews, the ET Connection, continuing here. Joey in the Space Travelers Club on our website. Keith, you mentioned the strobe effect where vibrations can be noticed, such as when someone uses a tachometer. 
Does Sasquatch disappear in the same way? Some of them, the answer is yes. More often than not, they just simply know how to stand extremely still, and they'll do, if if you're looking at heavier foliage, they just stop moving and they'll blend in, just like any camouflaged animal. But yeah, mm-hmm. it, quite often it, it's sort of something I've been playing around with to try and get a handle on. And of course, the one thing about about some of these techniques is they don't really want people knowing how they do it because, let's face it, it means they've got to develop a new one. All right, let's move on to another question here because uh, we only have about two minutes. And let's go back to the Space Travelers Club where April is asking, what race is the giant spider and are they connected to Set? Uh, the answer to are they connected to set? By the feel of it, from what I understand about it, the answer would be no. Okay, now that being said, you know, the spider race on the, the we'll try English on that one, where it comes to the spiders, um, they're an interesting race to start with. I'm just, there we go. The, tor- the Torians are your, are your spiders. Okay, but are they related to Seth? No. Not from not from anything I've gathered anyway. All right. Uh, I think we got time for one more. And we'll continue on. Joey is asking, "Have you ever tried on an extraterrestrial exoskeleton? If so, we need details, please." Well, the answer to that is technically yes. I have I have utilized one of their what do we do, their environmental suits, and those especially like I tried I tried one of the Swazian environmental suits. It's a good thing because you don't want to go outside their atmosphere, like outside their cities. You definitely don't want to go outside and get caught in a, in a sandstorm. And what we have for environmental suits. Would not survive. Really? Yes, I will get into more detail on that when we get back, but you said we only had like a minute left here. Yeah. Well, let's hold that thought then, because uh, I want to know about these exoskeletons. I think Joey just opened up a whole new can of woo for us here, and I like it. I like it a lot. Our Keith, you're awesome, man. We're going into hour two with our Keith Andrews and the ET Connection. The ET Connection happens the first Friday of every month. And Keith's next appearance will be on Friday, March 6th. Hey, I want to remind everybody before we go to break here that after the show at midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern, we're going to do the Friday night SOR after party, Ask Me Anything, live on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Space Down Radio. So you might want to stick around, put the toothpicks in your eyes, and join us there on YouTube right after this live radio show. We'll be back with more R. Keith Andrews right after this on Space Down Radio. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the story you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. 
The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Hi there, this is Geraldine Orozco from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Are you an experiencer of something strange that can't be explained? Do you want help finding out what's going on? I'm Ryan Stacy, head of the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESSA. We've teamed up with Spaced Out Radio to investigate cases filled out in the SOR Sightlines Report. We are independent, and there's no cost to what we do. All we need is your experience. Let's find out what's happening together on the SOR Sightlines Report. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiele. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. This is Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. Hello, space Travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye!
Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at space.radio.com. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do, what to do. Why not get Bumblefuck? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning bumble f***. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spice it up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR space traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Welcome back to hour number two of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for being with us. We say hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates. Chuck and the crew at KZFX 93.7 FM in Ridgecrest, California, enjoying a milkshake while they listen on in KDUN AM 1030 in Reedsport, Oregon. WQEE 99.1 FM in Noonan, Georgia. KDNF AM 1560 in Dangerfield, Texas. And UPRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans. On the digital side, we're proud to broadcast on Bart L's Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution. Radio. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free. Go to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Nemo Philist. Nemo Philist is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. You can check them out while you're listening to the show. Our Keith Andrews is here with the ET Connection. It happens the first Friday of every month as Keith comes in and talks everything extraterrestrial, taking your questions. If you're in one of our chat rooms or on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio, Keith, welcome back. Well, thank you very much for having me. And welcome to everybody that is either still here or is just recently joining us. All right, let's continue on here. Julian has a question. He is asking, what happens if you touch one of those gray skins? Um, well, it's kind of like touching somebody else's skin. Depending on where you touch them will determine the reaction. But on the whole, I mean, basically you're touching a, you're touching flesh. I'm not entirely certain what he's, what he's actually expecting. If he's expecting a, you know, to get an electric shock out of it, No. Although, if you touch a fire elemental, you can figure out what will happen there. Oh, them darn fire elementals. They're dangerous. Oh, yeah, we had one. There was actually one here back in 2003 when we we had that neat little clam bake. Oh, yes. That's when Kelowna, British Columbia, was literally surrounded by fire. Yeah. 100,000 people at the time, roughly, and we evacuated a third of them. Yeah, that was nuts. That was just nuts. All right, let's get to Claudia's question. She is asking, she says, I've, Keith, I had a dream. There were five beings. I'm going to get you to stop typing there for a second, Keith, if you don't mind. Um, it says, I had a dream. There were five beings in the room. It was a white room. There was an oval table. And they were explaining everything, like, why are we here? What are we made of? On and on information. They came for a week, every night in my dream. At the end of the week, I said, please don't come for a while. My head is so full of info. So they didn't. Has this happened to you, or have you heard of this? It was like a massive download. I've heard of it happening before. That's usually because of the grays. 
And depending on nor and if there were five of them, the odds are three were gray and two were Nordic. And that's actually quite normal. It's just they don't usually. It, it would be intriguing to find out what they were, what it was that you had asked that triggered that kind of download. Because they don't usually go into that much detail. All right. You know, Let, so w- with that type of download, then, that Claudia would have had, what kind of information would she have received? I'm betting dollars to donors that are prepping her for, for more, more direct involvement. Every now and again, you run into somebody that they, that the off-worlders decide, yeah, they would make a, a good liaison or a good counterpoint, right? And then they'll go through the through the process of starting to give them the information and see what happens. The real catch to it is it depends on how she responds to it as to what they'll do with it. Gotcha. All right, let us move on here. As oh, we got a bunch of questions here. Let me let me find another one here. This one's from Vivster. Vivian is asking. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. I appreciate that. Chuck uh, from KCFX is tuning on in and messaging me here. Thanks, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Vivian is asking, Keith. Would you have any idea of why my first sighting of a gray alien would be only from the waist up with no movement or conversation? Holographic overlay. In other words, prep the mind by showing what's coming. Basically, it's the easiest way to put it. Okay, a picture, if you will, sitting in front of a desk and taking a picture of what's above the desk. Ultimately, by the sounds of it, they were simply simply put, letting her know ahead of time that they were going to come in. Hmm. I've never heard of that before. But that's okay. All right, let's well, get to Jason. Well, go ahead. You can answer that, and then we'll get to Jason's question. The thing is that things are changing between the between Terrans and Offworlders, right? Which means they've had to change protocols to a degree. People were talking for the longest time about when is disclosure happening. Well, from the Offworlders, that's exa- exactly what is taking place. Is they're starting to let people know what they're up to. By the way, that doesn't mean they're going to stop abducting people. Not right. yet, anyway. All right, let's move on here to Jason's question. He is asking, regarding the names of all the all the different species of aliens you're talking about, are these names you've given them, or are they from some sort of consortium, or what is it that they call themselves? Most of them are ones that I've come in that I've been able to translate. Many of their of their languages, um, frankly, I sort of have to interpret. For instance, you take a look at the Zerziks. Okay, they are an electrical spark. Humans cannot, you know, corporeals cannot make that sound to actually call them what they are. Okay. Martokians are literally, that is what they call themselves, because they don't call Mars, Mars. Okay, they themselves call Mars, Martok. Net result, they're Martokians, very much like we call this place Earth. Therefore, the people here are referred to as Earthlings. Okay, but on the whole... They, you know, a lot of the names are ones that are sort of, if you will, a translation that I've had to work with because I couldn't physically, you know, we couldn't actually get the get the name wrapped around. Like, you take a look at, for instance, you know, you take a look at the Corlocks. Okay, they don't have a spoken language. Okay, they've got a pheromonal language. 
you know, them, the Verozic are another one that just does not have something that, that a corporeal can actually state. Now, when we take a look at the Etuari, what you guys call leprechauns, that's what they call themselves. Okay, so it's sort of a mixed bag. And when you look at like if you if you look at the at the uh, untars, um, basically that's more of a what's the word for it? That's more of a position than it is a race. I mean they are they are demons, but an untar is what you would call a bounty hunter. You know, so it's kind of a mixed bag as to depending on which ones. You know, which ones you look at. You know, the Maldocs so, that I... Go yeah. ahead. The so Maldocs. The, the, so the Martians are actually the Martokians? Yes. And much as they are green, they are not three feet tall. Nor are they little black people with with funny helmets. Hmm. Just opened up a whole new world of woo there, Keith. Whole oh, new world of woo which, there. We had a question that we when we were just going to break regarding yes. exoskeletons. Okay. Or, well, yes, that's right. That that is right. The exoskeletons. I apologize for that. Yeah, so do I. It just it just all of a sudden hit me when it just, you made that comment. It just yeah, that's what we talked about. Um. Anyway, the Strazazian in their their bio suits, they had to modify them. For because I could not wear one of their bio suits. Number one, it had something to do with the fact that I myself am only five foot seven, and on average they're seven and a half to eight feet tall. Okay, so we run into a problem right off the bat. But they built, they modified one of their environmental suits so that I could wear it because they literally built an exoskeleton inside it so I could move the thing. Picture, if you will, um, well, Dave, you might know this one, but you know the old deep sea diving bells? Yes. Right, the original ones from way back in the late 1800s, early 1900s? Yes. Picture walking around with one of those that's eight feet tall without an exoskeleton. It's pretty heavy. Exactly. Wouldn't See, be very comfortable. No, although you could sit in it quite nicely. Lots of room to maneuver. Yes. But they are very, very well built. They're, they're designed literally to handle the atmosphere outside. See, I had the unfortunate, I'll call it an unfortunate experience, years back. I was, I was there. There were a number of other humans that were there as well, only they did not listen. They were told, do not exit the building without the, without the suit. Of course, being the way they were inclined, they went outside. Unfortunately, they also got hit by what, they, what the Srizazians call a sandstorm. Now, a sandstorm on Earth, you can, you can get lost, you can get blinded the whole nine yards, Right. On theirs, because of the because of the heavy the heavy particulates in the atmosphere, yes. it'll strip a human to the bone in a heartbeat. Okay, Scary. and oh yeah, like I said, it was an experience. I didn't say it was a pleasant one. You know, right. this is go ahead. But the yeah, the exoskeletons are. They are designed. The, the funny thing with them is their their collars actually are clear. The the gorget part of the of the extra of the environmental suit is actually clear because with the Strazazians, their collar, like their throat, is a it's literally a what's it, it's photoreactive. Okay, and thermal reactive. They communicate using the colors on their throat when they can't speak. 
And trust me on this one, in the middle of a sandstorm there, you cannot, I mean, you can talk, you won't be heard, but. Interesting. Very, very interesting. All right. Let us continue on with the questions from the audience here, because we have a few more that we want to definitely, definitely get in. I just got to find them now. Or did we catch up? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. All right. Ah, here's a question from Bartles on Twitter. Bartles is asking, is there any truth to the rumor that races like the Zeta Reticulans are very racist, highly racist, to other races of aliens or humans as well? Everybody will spot that kind of behavior, but the, from what I've witnessed, no. The, the Zeta Reticuli or Zeta Reticulans are very, um, they're very open-minded. I mean, quite frankly, they'll hybridize anybody. You know, they're not fussy that way. But no, I've never, myself, I've never actually witnessed them being, especially not as a race. You'll end up with the occasional one that is certainly that way. Okay, but as a, as a general racial trait, no. So they all figured out how to get along. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say they all figured out how to get along, but they're not, on the whole, um, you know, racist. The funny thing is, humans, on the whole, are not racist. You see a lot of people claiming they're racist, but if you ask them, ask them one question, are you a human? Is that person over in that country human? If they come up with yes, then they're not racist. Very okay. interesting. Very interesting. All right. Let's continue on with ET abduction here while we're waiting for more questions from our audience. All right. Okay. When people are abducted, and let's say they remember that, let's say in 2019, they recall having two abductions. Is it just two that they have had, or is there a multitude more that they may not remember? More often than not, it's more. Kind of like that old idea, if you see one mouse in your house, you see there's a half dozen hiding. Kind of the same idea. Okay. You know, you, so, can also, you can also bet if one person has been taken, it's a good bet somebody else in the house has been taken as well, or has been has borne witness to it. So when that is going on and we have people experiencing this, how come they don't recall the other times they've been taken? There's any number of possibilities there. Um, the human brain does not necessarily recall everything. It's like if you walk into a room, you know, walk into a library, for example. Okay, you will know, notice, you'll notice some books will stand right out for you. And other ones you just completely overlook. Okay, have you ever noticed with watching some movies, you know, you watch them time and again, you're always seeing something new? Yes. You know, you, they just, you know, each event doesn't necessarily hold the same, either the same trauma or the same injury. Or maybe the anesthetic worked better on the on the other ones. The Great Bart L. is asking, if you only get abducted once, is it because they weren't really interested in you? Um, I guess that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily think it as a bad thing, but um, they may have been simply going for a, you may have been part of a, of a if you will, sample abduction i.e. they're trying to look for something in a, in a given area. So they're doing a number of abductions, and you just happen to be caught in that, kind of like getting caught in a, in a um, traffic stop. 
you know, the seatbelt check. You know, it may just be in the luck of the draw, but it's it's seldom that they go, oh, this person's of absolutely no use. More often than not, it's just been a, a an overall an overall um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just basically part of a group thing is more often the case. Canadian Joe is asking. Have you ever been assimilated by the Borg? No. Although technically you could classify me as being cyborg. Because I do have a I do have a um a Terran based metal implant in my in my in my arm. But no, the funny thing about being assimilated by the Borg, they don't unassimilate you. Much more importantly, they're not here yet. As evidenced by the fact that mankind is still alive. True. Very true. Although with that in mind, mankind is playing some really dangerous games with itself. Oh, Bart is... uh, Bart on LGAB is just absolutely cracking me up tonight. He goes... (laughs) I once met a Keith R. Andrews. Any relation? God knows better than I do. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, KSM in the LGAB chat room is asking, how do, how do aliens relieve themselves? Do they even flatulate? Again, this is one of those broadband things that you get a whole mixed bag. Some the answer is yes, some the answer is no to both questions. Right? I mean, you take a look at the Corlock. They don't, period. They just, they just reassimilate everything. They have a, they've got a, metab- a metabolism that literally converts everything. Okay, now... You know, you take a look at some of the races, and, you know, yeah, they definitely do. But, I mean, you know, it's one of those things of pretty much the same way most people do. You got a hole to get rid of what's being out of the poison that's left in your system, and away you go. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking going into the graphic detail might not be a wise move. Primarily because I am not what you would consider a doctor in the first place to be able to explain to that point. So they just don't hang out with their buddies and just break wind for the hell of it? Well, that depends entirely on the race and the group. I mean, you know, if you take a look, you know, just to, to give you an example, if you take a look at the, you know, Hey, Keith, hold, 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 hold that answer. Hold that answer because I asked it too late. we got to go to break here at the top, bottom of the hour. Our Keith Andrews, the ET Connection, and your questions continue right after this on Spaced Out Radio. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. 
cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience has proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Finish off your weekend and kick off your new week with me, Everett Themer, right here on Spaced Out Sundays. I'm going to bring you great guests, a little bit of snark, and plenty of information to think about. But don't worry, there's going to be plenty of woo as well. We are going to hit everything in the paranormal and supernatural, including the odd psychic Sundays. So tune us in on Sunday, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. 
If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble. We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajans.com. Past the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight, I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time. want to remind all of you that if you miss portions of this show or others, check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we got a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault, grab a great book from We Read the Night, join the Space Travelers for five bucks a month, and so much more. Hey, I also want to remind all of you that after the show, Every Friday night, the last few Fridays, we kind of started this, making it a little bit of a habit around here. At about 10 after 12 midnight, we're going to go live on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Friday night, SOR AMA, which stands for Ask Me Anything. I'll take your questions. I will ask answer them on YouTube live, and I would love it if you join us. It's free. Come on in and hang out with us if, well, if you got nothing better to do because, you know, I don't really have a social life outside of hanging out here. Our Keith Andrews is here tonight with the ET Connection. It happens the first Friday of every month. Keith, welcome back. Well, thank you for having me. And welcome back to all the audience. Got a question coming into our website from Casey. Hi, Casey. How you doing? And uh, Casey, if you want to check out how to get into our chat rooms on the play button on our website, there's a little chat bubble there. You can just sign in right there, and it'll take you to the chat room or join the Space Travelers Club as well. You can do that as well. So Casey's question for you, Keith, is this. Is there any way to initiate contact with extraterrestrials? Well, from my understanding, the answer is yes, but don't ask me how. I came by it the old-fashioned way. You know, I hear people talking about about using laser pointers to be able to signal people, to signal the, the off-worlders. But the reality is, if you look at the strength of the, of the laser pointers, they are not reaching orbit. You know, so do I know how you would go about it personally? No. What about I do meditation? Know. Would, would meditation work? Meditation may drop your your um, may drop your vibratory rate enough to create a, a change in your biometric field on your bioelectric field, thereby catching their attention. But understand, there's a lot of people trying that method, so you have to go some deep to to make a distinct difference. All right. Hope that helps you out, Casey. Thank you for asking. All right, let's get to Trip, who is asking. Keith, how do you deal with men in black? Most of the time I ignore them. Primarily because, for the most part, they seem to ignore me at this point. Okay. Um, basically speaking, men in black are, are a group of people, you know, they're a group of, of humans that are trying to find out all kinds of information. Right. And they will they will use all sorts of what I call questionable techniques. However, that being said, since I don't since I nor anybody that I'm directly connected with have had complications with them, on the whole we don't deal with them. I don't agree with their methods by any stretch, and it'd be really nice if they would actually take responsibility for it instead of blaming the off You know, because basically what they're trying to do is make it look like it's not them doing it. First rule of thumb, if you're going to do something, acknowledge it. All right. 
April in the Space Travelers Club is asking, do CE5 groups attract consciousness testing? Um, from my understanding, the answer would be yes. Okay, depending on what the definition of consciousness testing would be. If you're talking about do they attract the attention of... of questionable researchers, the answer is absolutely. Okay. And you get enough CE5 focus groups in one area, and you will catch the attention of, of off-worlders because you're dealing with a whole with a whole pocket of concentrated energy. It's kind of like if you if you take a look at a, at a really black room and one person has a big laser. It shows up a little, but you put 15 people in the same room with big lighters, and, that, and all of a sudden that corner is going to light up. Oh, it sounds gotcha. almost as healthy as mine. All right. Jason is asking, what percentage of humanity needs to fully embrace the reality of off-worlders before they would openly present themselves to all? I have no way of giving you a definitive answer to that one. You know, the reality, the, the big issue is not so much when mankind embraces the possibility of off-worlders. It's when man, mankind embraces the idea that most of the people on this planet, especially as far as people are concerned, are the same race. They're different colors, different nationalities, but they're all human. When people get to that point, that's when the off-worlders are likely to be more open to the idea of going, by the way, you're not the only race. But right now, mankind is still shooting at people because of the wrong color. Okay, they've still got this idea that broadcasting, they're going hunting Sasquatch, is a good way to get Sasquatch's attention in a positive fashion. It's kind of like shooting at somebody and going, by the way, are you friendly? Oh, if only Sasquatch had a television that he could actually see where they're going first. I mean, there are days where I've questioned that. But oh, we exactly. do know if you pay attention to TV, they do like coconut. All right. Let's move on here to Twitter. Got a couple questions there. This one from Greco. Are there any other colonies of humans out there that we don't know about or have forgotten about? Yep. Mobius other side of the sun in the exact same orbit as Earth is a complete human colony. Got there about 30,000 years ago. So I guess technically at this point we can't qualify it as a colony. But Mobians are quite frankly human. There are also a number of, of smaller pockets because there are groups on on the moon, on Mars, on EO, and there's a very there's a um, about two years ago they opened a research station out on Titan. These are ones that you'll find out down the road. All right, Bartholomew is asking on Twitter. Oh, where is it here? There it is. Is there any alien species so unadvanced that they would actually pay money for vegetables like kale? I got to agree with this one. I really do. Well, the ones that aren't that advanced, first of all, I mean, do they exist? The answer is yes, although in all fairness, they probably don't know what money is. I mean, think of it this way. Rabbits love kale. So do iguanas. Yep. So, I mean, you know, although I do agree, myself, not a fan. No, it's terrible. It's terrible. You well, know? it's dry, it's coarse, you know, I mean, there's a lot of bad things about it in my eyes. It's like that quinoa crap. You throw that in kale. The only good place for that is in the garbage. Help it recycle. Actually, from what I gather, if you if you mix it with water, it turns into a really nice concrete base. 
Oh, Kale is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Oh, Nikki I absolutely is a- agree. Nikki is asking, is there any way, shape, or form that you can see for an abductee to protect themselves against being abducted besides their sole contract? Um, that I'm aware of? No. You know, if, if well, technically there is a way, but you would have to figure out how to, you would have to be able to meditate to such a degree as to modify your, your metabolic vibratory rate in order to become non-substantial. That way they can't grab a hold of you. Right. Okay, that would be one way you could do it. And if you can, if you can figure out, if you can remember how to pull triphasic reconfiguration, then certainly it takes you outside of their abduction capabilities. And yeah, I know what that sounded like. Basically, it boils down to you have to be able to shift out of corporeal existence into a into a um, fluid time state. And as far as I'm aware. Humans have not figured out how to pull that off yet. All right. Let's move on here. All right. Greco on Twitter is asking, are there any robotic alien races? Yep. Well, that was a really good digest answer. I'm pretty certain you want something a little more. However, yeah, that usually, means- usually. <laughs> yeah, just give them the, just give them the, the real short answer. Um, I just got to track down, and this is why I keep this book handy, because I've got so much information that I threw in the thing. Um, but I originally was calling them the mechanoids, simply because of the fact they're not from around here. They're actually quite a ways out. They haven't gotten there at yet. But you don't really want them here anyway. Okay, primarily because they will wipe out mankind. This is why I this is why I figure with with people that are playing around with the idea of, of um, what do you call it artificial intelligence, not necessarily the brightest move, but there are you know there are a couple of races that that fall under that classification. I'm just trying to move because I cannot for the life of me. I'm looking right at the book right now, trying to find the trying to actually find the answer. But they are well, they're what actually drew the drew the tech like here in the first place. Right, the the four and three and a half, four and a half foot sorry, four and a half, five and a half foot reptilians. Kind of look like raptors. They came here trying to prepare for the for the um, for the mechanoids arrival. And no, by the way, they are not shaped like you know, like cars. Although that would be entertaining. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Let's continue on as we got about 10 minutes here before we got to go to break at the top of the hour. Our Keith Andrews is our guest. Nick is asking, a few shows ago, Keith, you mentioned about an alien Earth race that is almost impossible to conquer since they do not use normal physics. Please tell us more about this. Are they the Tuatha Danan or something else? Well, as far as the Tuatha Danan would be, I'd be inclined to say that he, that he is referring to the because the Mobians. Oh, wait a minute! I know who he's referring to. No, you're referring to the race that I actually that are literally called the Elfin. They are what you consider elves, as in fairy folk. And the reason you are not going to take them out is because of the fact that they literally employ what Terrans call true magic. As in, point a finger and a building falls down. Or clap your hands and send a shockwave that levels a city block. Now, of course, those are the advanced ones. That's not the the average. But what people call mythological magic, these guys do as children. 
So no, the modern technology will not work. Interesting. Okay, let's move on. Trip is asking, the possible 1954 Grieta Treaty is possibly ending soon, within the next month and a half. Has Keith heard anything about this treaty ending and what might come about since it is ending? And that treaty is where allegedly President Eisenhower cut a deal with extraterrestrials trading humans for ET technology. Ah, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, we're going to have to bring me up to speed on the first part. Um, that being said, number one, it wasn't an abduction treaty. It was not an abduction treaty. Like they were named, Eisenhower did not sign a treaty to say, oh, you can take X number, X number of humans and you give us weapons. I have no doubt he tried to. But the reality is that the off-worlders wouldn't turn over off-world technology because it would have thrown the balance of mankind's evolution completely off kilter. Okay, and that is just one of those, that's one of those things they just won't go to. You know, that, that's the biggest thing. So what will happen when that, well, considering that particular treaty wasn't signed, um, it shouldn't have any real functional bearing. Do you think it happened? I think that they wanted it to happen, but I do not, from everything I understand, the off-worlders would not turn over weapons to humans at all. You know, they did turn over some medical and communication information, you know, and technologies. But that being said, mankind has evolved now to the point where those technologies are now understood and integrated into modern society, at least technological ones. Okay, All so, right. you yeah. know, ending that clearly isn't going to have a lot of impact. All right, let's move on. Hey, uh, we're going to go to Twitter here. Troublesome, who just added us on Twitter. Thank you so much for the follow at Spaced Out Radio. They're asking, what are races on? What races are on the moon? I have had one on my mind contact, and long story short, afterward, I went to pick up something, and it shot away from me with a feeling of extreme vibration. Well, the I mean, you've got one heck of a mix on on the moon. Okay. Number one, greys are heavily there. The greys and the Nordics are very much there. You'll find the Martokians are in and out. The um, the ones, I, and I'm still looking for the name for that, but the Aldebarans and the Orions are both in and out of that area. Okay. And then, of course, you've got the um, Rocher do show up there. And the Lycan. You know, just to name a few of them. I mean, basically speaking, you got to realize it's sort of, if you will, a way station. A stopover point for people passing by. Okay, and of course, let's not forget the number of humans that actually end up on that moon. Although I don't think those can be classified as alien. No, I, I wouldn't uh, think that at all. All right, let's continue on here. Joe is asking, how many aliens are listening to Spaced Out Radio as we speak? I have no idea. I can't tell you how many humans are listening. I can tell you that you're being listened in on. And yes, let's let's not go down the down the bad rabbit hole here, but yes, the people that are listening, they off-worlders do know. They have tracked it all down. They know who is listening. They've got a better a better information system than mankind has. Probably okay, clearer, so. probably clearer signal too. Good bet. Considering they don't have to cut through the atmosphere, they just punch between it. They don't have to deal with Shaw for Wi-Fi. That's all I'll say. Well, look at the bright side. Tell us isn't any better. True that. True that. All right, yeah. Nick is ask, 
We only got a couple minutes here. What Nick is asking, Keith, can you try to drop something off at Dave's house next time you go on a ride with the aliens so Dave knows it was you? Yeah, that'd be a cute trick. Unfortunately, at the speed we, that we usually end up leaving, the odds of actually dropping something off without leaving a crater would be a bit of a problem. Picture what happens if I throw a penny out the window. It might hurt. Probably create a crater anyway. Mind you, if it actually hits you directly, you won't know. Of course, I can see your wife being rather ticked at me. True. Very true. All right, continuing on here, as we got about two and a half minutes. Hotterock is asking, do extraterrestrials play sports? Absolutely. Although a lot of them are a lot more violent than the sports that mankind plays. But I do remember as a child playing what amounted to, to zero-G wall ball. That was a lot of fun. And that's played by multiple different races. You know, do they, play they for, do, do they play for trophies? Well, in a manner of speaking, they usually... That particular game isn't usually played for for trophies, but then it's usually played for or played by the kids. It's more of a way of getting them to interact with different races. But I will tell you, they've got a they've got a game of uh, that's similar to football that humans would not like because more often than not, you're replacing the team on a monthly basis, and I do mean the entire team. Something to do with the fact that they actually play to kill. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah, mankind calls it calls football a, a rough sport. <laughs> you know? No kidding, eh? No kidding. Well, look at that. Look at that. I think we got time for oh, one or two more here. Claudia is asking, are spaceships a manifestation of thought made by the aliens so that way they can use it to travel? Oh, I asked yeah. that one already. Yeah, I, you asked that I, one apolog- already. I apologize as I'm trying to get caught up here. Well, let's see. Silly Facebook has decided to to uh, all of a sudden make me refresh here. All right, here's Claudia's question. What kind of energy do the extraterrestrials have? Is it very different from our energy? Can they change your energy just being around them? Um, that's kind of a complicated question, but that's great. Uh, the answer is, when we're talking about the, bio, about the biological weapon, uh, the biological energy, it is still a, it's still literally a quantum, it's a quantum electric flux. It's a bioelectric energy, and yes, it does change. It does alter race to race, and given a stronger field, it will modify the field around the person, around the other individual. It doesn't technically change it, but it will. It will disrupt it to the point that it's uncomfortable. All right, we're going to leave it at that right there, Keith, because we're going to go to break here. Our Keith Andrews, the ET Connection, continues for another 30 minutes on Spaced Out Radio. Then at the bottom of the hour, we're going to get to the SOR Newswire and a packed house on the thought of the day. Stay tuned. More Spaced Out Radio coming up in Hour 3, and we got the YouTube After Hours show at Spaced Out Radio on YouTube as well. Hello everyone, this is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightlines Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightlines Report on the Spaced Out Radio website and let's figure out what's going on together. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. 
Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just five bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache. So why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up? All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiel. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? 
Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spaceoutradio.com. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumble Fuck? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning Bumble f- Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spicing up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. I appreciate all of you tuning us on in. Hi to everyone listening in on UPRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans. KDUN AM 1030 in Reedsport, Oregon. KDNF AM 1560 in Dangerfield, Texas. WQEE 99.1 FM in Noonan, Georgia. And down in Ridgecrest, California, KZFX 93.7 FM. On the digital side, thanks for everybody listening in on LGAB's Kingdom of Nye Radio. Radio and Revolution Radio. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club, Nemophilist. Nemophilist is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we got a plethora of features for you. You can check them on out while you're listening to the show. want to remind everybody that in just over an hour, once we're done the live broadcast on radio, we're going to go live on our Friday night SOR AMA, Ask Me Anything. On YouTube, youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Come join us. We'll have a good time. Our Keith Andrews is here for the next half hour on Spaced Out Radio with the ET Connection. It happens the first Friday of every month. Keith will be back on March 6th. We love having Keith around here. Welcome back, Keith. We've got a ton of questions for you. Well, thank you very much for having me. And welcome again to all the people still listening in and joining us. And let's see what we can do if I get some of these wrapped up anyway. All right. Let's start off with Claudia. We're going to have a hat trick from her. Can aliens lift our consciousness, cause a kundalini effect? Um, they can guide you to do so, but quite frankly, that has to be done by the individual. You know, they now they will some of them especially the heavily em- empathic ones can absolutely make it feel like it you know if you will give you an energetic high but the actual raising of the consciousness is a journey that each individual has to take of their own accord and rest assured it's not exactly a short journey got gotcha. you All right, let's continue on here, my friend, from Claudia in the Space Travelers on Facebook. She is asking, Keith, do you personally know anyone who has left with the aliens, traveled to their planet, and returned? If so, what did they tell you about their experience? Uh, The answer to that is yes. And before anybody goes, I know I'm not revealing a name, but... 
they were quite pleased with with their with their journey. Um, they did end up going to to a number of different places. Ended up on the frank, and quite frankly, from what they told me, they ended up on the on the front battle line. They ended up actually on a on a warship. Okay. The the only problem with it is they ran into a little bit of health issue because of miscalculation on the on the part of the race that picked them up or that took them on, depending on how you look at it. Not a lasting health issue, just temporary one. It was rectified by the people that caused it. You know, unlike a lot of the people on this planet. You know, they caused the problem, they sorted it out. But apparently it was quite the it was quite the uh, experience for them. Intriguing. Very intriguing. All right, let's get to Claudia's third question. Why do you think they contacted you, Keith? How long have you been in contact, and why do you think you were chosen to experience all that you have? Did you ask for this? Oh, I definitely didn't ask for it. It started the day I was born. Which, in rough answer to your question, was about 56 and a half years ago. Okay, as for the why, considering the fact that my father was also involved, and I know my grandmother was also a gifted individual, I'm guessing it was, it was simply put, a, you know, a, blood, you know, a bloodline thing. As far as how I ended up in the position I'm in, as near as I can figure, it's because of the fact that I treated all of them the same way I treat everybody else, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But because of the fact that I literally do not see a difference between them aside from physical configuration between them and, and people, or between them and each other, as near as I understand it, that is one of the, one of the dominant reasons why I ended up in the position I'm in. Interesting. All right, let's go back to Claudia here for a second. She's asking, would we be seeing many more ships daily if the aliens did not cloak their ships? Would our skies look like a busy freeway if we could see them all? And is no, there a way to like notice if they're lot. cloaking? A parking lot. It looked more like a parking lot. <laughs> you know, quite frankly, the sky is not as quiet as what people think. Now, the answer to the question... Is there a way to see if they're cloaking? The answer is yes. If you watch the stars and watch the stars blinking out in sequence and then reappearing, okay, because what will happen if a ship is going by, if it's cloaked, it will still not, many times it will still not let the light from the star get by it because not every race now has the technology to do that. Some do. But you watch for the for a discrepancy in in what in the visual what you're seeing. If it winks out and then winks back in, and it's doing it in a in a um, in a sequence, odds are you're looking at something that is not there. You know, it's not that there's something that you're not physically seeing, but you see it by evidential you know evidential circumstance. Right. April is asking, is the sun a fuel source for some ships? Absolutely. Even more so for the planet itself. But yeah, I mean, essentially speaking, the sun is a fusion reactor. Okay. And what some ships do is they go into the, they go right on the, on the well, when we talk about the surface of it, we're talking the outskirts, and they literally pull the pull the fuel off of the off the sun itself. But rest assured, it's not in any danger of being depleted. Interesting. All right, all right. Let's uh, see what else we got in the chat rooms for right now. Hard to believe. I I think we're caught up. I think we're caught up, Keith. Holy this mackerel. Is <clears throat> this is hard to believe. Well, it does happen periodically. I know. 
I know. We're I'm just not used to this. <laughs> yeah. We've been pu- we've been pu- we've been pushing pretty hard on the audience questions tonight. They've been fantastic. Oh, haven't they though? I mean, that's what makes this show work. You know, quite frankly, if it weren't for the audience, you know, I'm not one for planning things at the best of times. You know, but the audience questions have just been absolutely incredible. All right. Well, you know, I got to think of something off my t- top of my head here. Oh, question just came in from Nick. And that is Oh, uh, what's the last thing you ate, Keith? Eating anything new? Uh, I think the last thing I ate was actually a pop tart. That probably was the way it was going, but. I don't even remember what I had for dinner, man. Well, that's why I said (laughs) Pop tart sounds good, actually. Yeah, I'm finding troubles trying trying to find a Twinkie supply now. All right. Keith, as we we move forward here and, you know, 2020 is we're all wondering what's going to happen with E.T. Contact. Have you been contacted by any off-worlders to say what their plans are for this year? Well, what I'm what I'm finding is they are trying to they're definitely trying to let people know, let the individual know, not the governments, not the corporations, but individuals that they're not here. You know, they're here, yes, from an exploratory, from a research standpoint, but they are not here to try and take anybody over. It's just the the human, the speed the human genome actually regenerates and the ease with which it is to repair, they do find it a rather fascinating, a rather fascinating medical anomaly to them. Okay. So, I mean, what they're planning on doing is they're still planning on doing the research, but this is an extremely intriguing time for them. You know, when you take a look at the xenosocioeconomic standpoint of the planet, they've got a lot of people sitting in the wings watching to see just exactly how mankind sorts out some of the things it set in motion. You know, right. because... Because it is, mankind is contrary to some people's belief. It is actually evolving. All right, Claudia's question is, do the aliens come here to collect our crystals and also minerals they may need or anything else you might know they may need from here? Well, where it comes to the crystals, um, in one sense... I mean, the Vulcans definitely come here to collect their crystals because they, they, they drop their kids here to, to let them hatch. Okay. Do understand, Vulcans are a crystalline race. And there's a neat little... Uh, there's a, I think it's New Mexico. It has the great crystal caverns. It's a nesting ground for the Vulcans. So, but that being said, do the do the off-worlders come to collect some of the, of the minerals and what have you? No doubt, but for the most part, it's more souvenir than anything else. The Teclec were originally coming here to strip mine the place, but that got interrupted due to a couple of wars that they got involved in, not the least of which was a civil war. All right, let's continue on. Let's go to the Space Travelers Club here on Facebook. And question coming from Jason. When China and NASA return to the moon, how does the base on the far side plan to stay hidden? Well, first of all, it's kind of like asking when you go to the grocery store next week. Okay, it's not like they ever stopped going. That is the one thing that the off-worlders have got in arrangement with the with the governments that the governments have actually followed through with, and that is they don't reveal, they don't talk about the fact that the moon is actually occupied. You know, so ultimately, it's a question of they're just plain not going to be admitting it anyway. It won't be until until. 
um, civilians are, shall we say, readily available to go, that they're going to have to actually open that door. At that point, it would not shock me to find the move and move it to another planet, like to another to one of the moons. All right, continuing on here, Hadarak is asking, do aliens have empathy for humans? Some do. Not all of them by any stretch. Okay, mind you, that unfortunately seems to be a sentient, a sentient problem from, you know, from one, from one evolutionary race to another. Okay, I see, you know, I see the same thing with, with humans where it comes to animals. What humans consider lower life forms. You get some people that are very empathetic towards the animals and the plants of the planet, but the majority really are not. And it's the same thing with, with the off-worlders. Some of them are very empathetic towards humans. The vegans are one race that it's not so much they're not empathetic as they have no way of comprehending the problem. See, vegans don't have a pain center, so they cannot, they cannot comprehend pain. They cannot comprehend the fear that goes with it. So, of course, they're pretty much hooked on that one. Right. Right. I see that. All right. Let's move on here. In the Space Travelers Club, we have... I'm back. I'm not sure who that is. Me either. I think it might be April. What can humans do to speed up disclosure? Oh, that's the easy part. Good luck with it, by the way. Start, saying, start literally on a global level. Start looking at all people on the planet as the same race. Get over the idea that different color makes different race. And realize that you're all human. When people on the whole have accepted that, you'll find that the off-worlders are not quite so, so um, shall we say, reluctant to, to reveal themselves. But right now, mankind still hasn't figured out the basics. So All right. from an individual yeah, base, you know, from an individual base, if you will, spread the word that the fact that somebody is a different color or born in a different part of the planet does not make them another race, and start treating them as you would treat yourself, you know, as you would have them treat you, and you'll find that the off-worlders are a little more, a little more open to the idea. All right, let's move on here. Trip is asking, or pardon me, Will is asking, Keith, do you think more people right now are seeing triple numbers, like 111, 222, 333? Honestly, I haven't noticed a real increase in it. I've been hearing those numbers from people for, you know, ever since I got into the actual professional psychic, uh, psychic industry. And that's been 20 years now that I've been in the professional side of it. Well, actually, in all fairness, 86, so it's been, what, 30 years? But, um, no, I haven't, myself, I haven't really noticed a change. All right. Shanna on Twitter is asking, Keith, do you have any stories of aliens healing abductees from illnesses? A number of them. I mean, I myself had my arm reset by them. Right. For the ever since ever since the you know the Talons actually snapped my arm just to find out what kind of what kind of um, flex capacity they had in my arm had, um, I was never with my right arm. I was never able to touch my right shoulder with my right hand. It just wasn't possible. Right, and then one day I woke up. And it fa I literally told my girlfriend at the time that it felt like somebody had amputated my arm and reattached it. 
and then we got talking, and she mentioned that she had torn a strip off of off of one of the one of the people involved, and basically told, "Look, if you're going to keep taking him, the least you could do is fix his arm." The following night, I had it happen a second time, where I, again I told her it felt like somebody amputated the arm and put it back together, right. And from that point forward, I've been able to touch my touch my right shoulder with my right hand. Prior to that, it was just physically, literally impossible. You know, I've heard of people that have been well, staggering numbers that have been cured of pregnancy, but I don't think that qualifies. You know, there's been a lot that have been cured that have been cured of certain cancers that, quite frankly, mankind could have done in the first place. All right, continuing on here, I like Tripp's question here. Astronomers have been noticing and been on the edge with the way Betelgeuse, the constellation, has been acting and the star has been acting lately. Keith, have you heard anything about it, and will it be going supernova anytime soon? Well, soon, yes. In time for mankind to see it, or more to the point, in time for, I think it was, it said it was Tripp that was asking the question. Mm-hmm. I would not, uh, pardon me for forgetting names that quick, but um, I would not not expect Trip to be able to see it. Okay, because understand, if something go, a star going supernova, from from a Terran standpoint, could be a thousand years down the road. But right. is it unstable? The answer is yes. All right. We only got a couple minutes left with you, Keith, about, well, about 90 seconds here. I want to uh, I want to just get uh, one to two more questions in. All right. Kevin is asking, Keith, it appears that we are having more large near-Earth objects passing by in recent years. If that is the case, should we be alarmed? Um, as long as they keep passing by, the answer is no. Fortunately... Where it comes to the real big ones, once it would be classified as planet killers, the off-worlders are watching for. Okay. The ones that are just going to create a, a mess, they're not going to. And, yeah, that will cause problems for man. But are we in danger of being, of being eradicated by an asteroid? No. Okay, right. there is one... Let, let's, sneak, let, let, let's sneak one more in because we got about 40 seconds. Uh, okay, okay. Chris, Chris is asking, Keith, are you aware of incidents where UAV activity has been witnessed following, followed by the discovery the next few days of dead non-domestic animals such as deer, caribou, or moose in or around trees with parent mutations or apparent mutations, pardon me, mutilations? Now, I've got to ask one question. What it's is a UAV? UAV? Yeah. Like a UFO kind of thing. Okay, it's a new designation. Okay. The answer is that's quite normal. The The radiation that comes off of many of the ships will immediately cause a cause a mutation in the local, in very localized areas. Okay, usually it requires them being seen still for a bit, though. Hey, Keith, we got to wrap things up here. I thank you for jamming in as many questions as you could tonight with our audience. It's always great to have you here. Your next appearance will be on March 6th. Thanks, buddy, for coming on in and entertaining us. Well, thank you so much for having me. All right. Coming up next, we have the SOR Newswire and the Thought of the Day. Space Out Radio continues right after this. Adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey, Spaced Out Radio fans, it's John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. 
Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to ChiveCharities.org and become a donor today. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark, and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiele. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Move over, brother, and let me own Saturday night. This is Rich Giordano, and I'm inviting you to tune on in to Spaced Out Saturday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, where I'm going to bust open the lids on everything paranormal. Why? Because we want answers, and I'm the guy who's going to deliver those answers to you. Join the chat rooms, and we'll see you this Saturday. Just be there. No, really. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble f- We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajons.com. At SpacedOutRadio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at SpacedOutRadio.com today.
Hey, everybody. The SOR Space Travelers is open. For just 5 bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. Glad to see the snow is falling again. Gee whiz. Just causing more chores for my day tomorrow. But that's okay. You guys don't have to do it. Well, the majority of you don't. That's okay. I'll do it for you. How about that? Anyhow, I want to remind all of you that... You can check out our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault. Grab a great book from We Read the Night. Join the space travelers for five bucks a month. And Captain Shirk has you all up to date on the SOR Newswire. The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire, the back end of every show where we get to the weird, the strange, the wacky, and sometimes the plagiarized. By the way, before we get into the stories, I want to remind all of you that in about half an hour, once we wrap up at the top of the hour, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and then in about 10 minutes after the top of the hour, we're going to do a live YouTube Friday night AMA. So I'm going to go on camera. Got my hair done, everything. I'm looking pretty good. And we're going to go on YouTube Live, and you can come join us. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. I'd love to meet with you guys and say hello, and we'll just shoot the breeze. Have some fun. All right. YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. So just a few days ago, Skeptical Inquirer writer Kenneth Biddle did a book review on Ghost Hunting for Dummies by Zach Bagans. And, you know, he saw some strange things on there. He believed that much of the article covered extensive suspected plagiarism from various uncredited sources, including almost an entire chapter taken from Joe Nichols' book, Camera Clues, a handbook for photographic investigation. Among other examples, he said in his blog that he provided, there was one from Troy Taylor, a former guest on this show, an author of various paranormal books, He says, I mentioned that according to my own findings, Taylor's work appeared to have been copied over 20 pages worth. Yeah, weird. So here's a little twist, because at the end of January, when Bagans posted on his Twitter feed, was great working with you at Troy Taylor 13 on Twitter on Ghost Hunting for Dummies reference guide. And thanks for clarifying all this. It kind of got Biddle thinking. So Troy Taylor Well, he said this. I have authored more than 130 books 
on the paranormal over the course of the past 30 years. I would like to thank Zach Baggins for allowing me the opportunity to assist him in conducting research for his book, Ghost Hunting for Dummies. A blogger recently claimed that Zach's book contained certain material of mine that he did not have permission to use. This is not true. I worked with Zach to publish this material, and as with countless other celebrity reference books, I agreed to serve as an uncredited researcher. This is a very common practice that, in this case, involving a, is involved assisting Zach in the time-consuming process of gathering, compiling, and assimilating prior published research materials. It goes on to say the publisher is already printing new copies to ensure that appropriate credit is given. Well, see, there's a little problem with this because Biddle had a conversation with Taylor previous to this. All right, because it seems like Taylor was literally saying that Biddle was lying about his article. But then Biddle published a conversation between he and Taylor that they had on Facebook Messenger that confirms that Taylor wasn't aware that he was being plagiarized by Beggins. Taylor stated, I already knew about it, and it was the battle I actually won. I received a substantial payment for this. Whoever the ghostwriter was, and you know who it wasn't him, used a ton of my material, but I got a settlement from it and let it stand since the old guidebook is out of print. I don't do the investigation stuff anymore. Too silly. I just write legends, lore, and mostly history and crime now. I think that's why I love your articles so much. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Now, the article goes on. You can find it on our website. We we did post it and give credit to Skeptical Inquirer. Okay, we did post it on our website. You might want to check this out because now Taylor, after getting paid off by Bacon's, will not return Biddle's messages for clarification on whether plagiarism actually happened in Bacon's latest book. A terrified man made a split-second decision to turn his bike around in the middle of a motorway after two people shot at him in an attempted robbery in Brazil. Eduardo Pimenta was driving on the Ferneo Diaz Highway in Brazil when he was accosted by men on another motorcycle. During the incident, which happened last Sunday, the retiree risked going against the flow of traffic on the wrong side of the road, coming perilously close to semi-trucks and cars to escape. He says, I knew that if I stopped, I would die. They shot, and then when it was, and then it was a matter of survival. Shocking footage, which was recorded from a GoPro, shows this entire incident. It is freaky. The man gesturing Mr. Pimenta to move his bike over to the far left-hand lane in an attempt to block him. Mr. Pimenta, who then reduced his speed, looks over the shoulder before turning around and driving the wrong way in the motorway to get away. Throughout the incident, he manages to keep control of the bike. It continues for several minutes until he rejoins traffic on the correct side of the road. At some points of the nail-biting journey, Mr. Pimento is traveling at speeds of more than 150 kilometers an hour, so about 95 miles an hour, and he drove for about two kilometers against the road. After the attempted robbery, Mr. Pimento said he tried to report it to police, but was unable to log the incident online. The Sao Paulo Secretariat said that without a report, Civil police could not investigate the case. Oh, man, is that scary down there? That's scary. Authorities have released the name of a Massachusetts man accidentally killed when his neighbor shot a crossbow at a pair of attacking pit bulls. The man killed in Adams on Wednesday afternoon was Joshua Jadu Singh, the Berkshire District Attorney's Office said. Jadu Singh was shot and killed in his apartment by a crossbow bolt that a neighbor had fired at dogs who were attacking the man. The crossbow struck one dog with a glancing blow, went through a door, hit Jadu Singh in the room where he was trying to barricade himself. The neighbor was a friend of the victim who had gone to his aid, District Attorney Andrea Harrington said in a news conference. The death is under investigation, but the neighbor is not expected to face charges, she said. His name wasn't released. One of the dogs belonged to the man who died. The other belonged to his girlfriend who lived in the home. The adult male pit bulls were known to fight and were usually kept in separate separate cages, Harrington said. The dogs were shot and killed by responding officers. How cool is this? Go fishing, pick up a piece of spacecraft. 
The captain of a charter fishing boat in Florida shared a video of his unusual recent recent catch, two parachutes, and a capsule door from the SpaceX Dragon Crew launch. David Stokes said he was fishing with some friends last week about 32 miles off the coast of Daytona Beach when he found two large parachutes that appeared to be with a capsule door attached. Stokes said the door appears to be from the SpaceX Dragon Crew capsule. The discovery came about 10 days after SpaceX deliberately exploded the rocket. He posed a video to discuss of the, uh, post a video of the discovery on YouTube. Stokes said he has attempted to contact Space X and tagged Elon Musk in a tweet about the discovery in hopes of bringing it to their attention. I'd like for SpaceX to come check it on out to see what they think about it. Any damage to it. It would also be awesome to have Elon Musk autograph it, he says. Yeah, it would. All right, continuing on here. A team of researchers from France, Colombia, and the United States has developed a type of yarn from human skin cells that can be woven into human textiles. What? Cap- like Captain Shirk, what? In their paper published in the journal Acta Biomateriala, the group describes the process they used and applications for the materials they produced. Medical textiles are materials that can be used to heal skin and other body parts. They can also replace parts of damaged organs. But not all patients have the same reactions to the textiles because the materials are often treated as foreign agents by the immune system. So t- scientists continue to look for ways to create textiles that the human body will accept. In a new effort, the researchers have created textiles out of human fibroblasts, cells that normally assist with the production of collagen and other fibers. The body will not reject them because they are natural human cells. The researchers have created a variety of these textiles out of the material for use in a wide variety of applications. The researchers first grew skin cells fibroblasts into sheets of material. The sheets were then fashioned into desired shapes. In many instances, they were cut into strings for applications such as suturing wounds. The strings could also be twisted or knotted to create braids or used like yarn for knitting or crochet applications. Can you imagine Grandma having one of these hanging for her plants? Yeah, one notable advantage of this new technique is that it does not require the use of scaffolds to create parts of organs. They can simply be fashioned in ways similar to knitting a hat or a scarf. That is actually kind of cool. See, that's good science. Good science. We like that stuff. All right? That's good research. A wheelchair, but you know what? Before I start this story, I got to tell you, this is a fantastic emotional moment. You got to see this. Go to our website. Check it on out. It's a story about a couple getting married. Now, the groom is wheelchair bound. But he did something really cool with the aid of his friends. They actually lifted him out of his chair for the first time in a decade. He stood and he got to dance with his wife at their wedding. Former college baseball player Chance Vesey from Georgia, was paralyzed from the waist down when he was involved in a motor scooter collision in Athens, Georgia, back in 2009. He was left with life-altering injuries, including a severely damaged spine and a fracture to his 10th vertebra in his neck. But just over 10 years later, with the help of his three friends, Rhett Hammond, Cody Cottle, and John White, Chance rose to his feet, held his wife, and slow danced to their favorite song, Because You Love Me, by Celine Dion. Yeah, this will bring a tear to your eye. This is pretty fantastic. No one other than his three three friends and new wife Molly knew about the dance, which Chance had practiced three times with his soon-to-be wife. In the video filmed by the groom's aunt, guests could be heard cheering and crying as they watched him move to the music while embracing his new bride. Eventually, his tearful mother Darby comes to dance, a moment she thought she would never have happened after Chance's horrific accident. Speaking after the wedding, he said it was the most magical moment of his life up to this point. The only thing that will ever top this will be when our first child is born. It was an awesome feeling to stand above Molly and have her hand on my chest. This type of injury can sometimes make you feel like less of a man. It can take a lot away from you. Good for him. You know what? That is just awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. He says, I I didn't just do this for me and my wife, but I wanted to do it for everyone. Out of the 380 people there, every one of them has been on this journey with me since my accident. I wanted to do it for them just as much as myself. More than anything... 
I wanted to do it for my parents. I wouldn't be where I am today without them, and I wanted them to see their son stand tall on his wedding day. I wanted my mom to be able to dance with her son like it should be. I was most excited for her reaction, and it did not disappoint. It was very emotional, yet uplifting moment in time that I wish I could freeze forever. Good for him. Good for him. That is an awesome story. Go watch the video. Keep some tissues nearby. Marty, how are we on the clown, man? Thought of the day happens every night at this time where we ask a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages, then read your responses on the air because we love the audience participation around here. Today's thought of the day is as follows. What do you think aliens want from us? We've got a lot of answers tonight. Start off with David. They want real beer, like Molson's. Tim. Definitely not our brains. Janice. The secret to the perfect barbecue sauce. Oh, yeah. Yeah, barbecue sauce is always good. Always good. Brian, intellectual copyright on our comedy of errors for their historical records. Isn't that the truth? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Russell, as Whitley Strieber says, they want us to catch up to them technologically to concretize themselves in our reality. As the late Jim Mars stated, someone is trying to recreate their super science. As the late Brad Steiger stated, the human soul is both the battleground and the goal of the other. Jacques Vallée states, the phenomenon serves as a control mechanism for human consciousness. As the friendship group states, you are all being invaded by an artificial race from Orion that worships technology. As Rudolf Steiner stated in the 1920s, beings from the eighth sphere snatch biologicals to convert to minerals. As Charles Fort stated, man, he has a lot here. All right. As Charles Fort stated, the earth is property. We are owned by someone. All others are warned off. As John Keel stated, there is an alpha group and an omega group. Someone out there loathes us. All right. Lopaka Kapanui from Hawaii. He goes, they're looking for Hawaiian timeshares. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Oh, wow. Dave, they're coming to collect Girl Scout cookies. Oh, these are good. This is creative tonight. Awesome. Park, they want our souls. And Lance follows up with, some aliens are demons and do not and do want to take as many people's souls to hell as possible. Tom, each race has a different agenda. Debbie, what do we want from monkeys? I don't know. I want nothing. I just want to watch them. Nicholas, they probably want a recipe for Bumblefoot's hot sauce. Or to hire me to draw cartoons for Mars Daily Newspapers. Very cool. Barry, the experimental study being conducted is far from over. If the entire truth was disclosed, it could easily trigger World War III. Such disclosure, you leave us with an unachievable truth and an unimaginable future and might surely end the concept of domestic tranquility. The human race would be disenfranchised. Jim. The recipe for Bush's baked beans roll, that beautiful bean footage. Joe, humans have the best hair in the galaxy. It's obvious they're here for our women and our hair. And, of course, tacos. Sylvia, they want our planet. Gary, they want our gold. Matthew, yeah, definitely timeshares. Bobby, they're just trying to figure us out. Barton, simply our belief. That's what they need. And also our blood. Nikki, too damn freaking much. Everything from DNA, embryos, infants, children, bodies, for whatever purpose, to name a small few. And Dave, I fully intend on figuring out how to exactly make it so that they can no longer abduct humans by humans using a specific something each human has naturally as a true defense system. No more victimization BS by them. Heather, they want our souls and our energy. Andrew, to eat us, we are a delicacy to them. 
Lori, check out Lizzie Alien Story in New Mexico. Millionaire matchmaker Patty Stanger has an extraterrestrial encounter in New Mexico. Oh, that sounds good. Hadarak, check that one out. Jake, we are an experiment. They are observing. John, I don't think that they want anything from us. If they did, they would just take it. It's not like we could fight back, really. I think it's more that they want to help us not kill ourselves, like probably many other races have. Natasha, protein from us, if anything, DNA. It probably has more to do with the natural resources of the planet. Okay. John, they want our anuses to probe. Ooh, John, that sounds painful. Marty, with all the cattle mutilations they do, they obviously are looking for the best cut of beef they can get. So if you want them to land on the White House lawn, just set some prime rib out there and wait for them to come and get it. Oh, that sounds like fishing. Sounds like fishing. John, another Jonathan. Considering the alien life is most likely beings that have traveled here from far in the future who are interested in our survival because it's also their survival, too, because they are us who have returned from the extreme far future. (laughs) Josh is about angel probes as well. Kelly, maybe Earth is a prison planet, more specifically Florida. The aliens are the guards watching over, making sure that Florida man doesn't reveal himself to be... What he really is. Alien convicts, people. Boom. Mic drop. Gabe, they want our cells, blood, and lots of Terran sex. Joe, they want our women folk because they're gorgeous. Sparkles, I would like to think possibly that I would depend on the species. Possibly some visit Earth simply because they can and have no agenda. We do know that for sure some species abduct people and use humans for reproductive purposes. Cattle mutilations may also contribute in some way, too. I saw a mutilated wild boar one time, and I could tell you it was a weird sight. They must have specific reasons for taking what they take off of animals. Well, wild boar, why wouldn't they take the bacon? Of course it's bacon, Sparkles. It's always always bacon big thanks to everybody tuning on in this week and playing along on this and the uh, thought of the day on twitter and facebook thanks captain shirk for a great great newscast and our keith andrews for et connection remember right after this we are going live on youtube in about oh, about 12 minutes time Go to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. You can check it on out about 10 after the hour. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Thanks for tuning us in all over our chat rooms, including Twitter at hashtag spaced out radio and our Facebook page, Spreaker. LGAB, Revolution Radio, the SOR Space Travelers Club on our website. Hey, everyone, have a great weekend because together, my friends, make a mistake. We're watching. We own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. I know you're out there somewhere watching me. Rich Giordano's final show with Spaced Out Radio tomorrow night on Saturday. His guest is Michael Schratt, Everett Themer on Sunday. Make sure you tune them on in because we are here seven days a week. I'll talk to you Monday. Brian Antonson joins us. Slumax Gold, where's it hidden? Come see us on YouTube in about 10 minutes' time. We'll be there. Will you? Goodbye.